Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. I hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends. This is our penultimate presentation on this series, Mounted Top Experiences. And we want to look at the devotional titled, The Problem of Assistance. The Problem of Assistance or Deputies. What is the problem with these assistants? Come with me to the book of 2 Kings. We are at chapter 4. We want to look at verse number 27. It reads as follows. And when she came to the man of God, to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehaz came to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word as we spend a moment in prayer. Kind and gracious Father, in the heavens above, thank you for the privilege of working with your servants, working with your children. And dear Lord, in the stations that you have appointed us into, how we pray that we may facilitate salvation, that we may ease the burden of your children and not become a stumbling block. I pray, dear Lord, that where we have erred in this regard, you may forgive our omission and our lack of foresight. This has been our prayer of faith. Bless us in our professional spaces and beyond. Amen. My good friends, just allow me as the custom is to raise, as usual, our five points. And what I want to raise here is the default position of assistants or deputies. They take it upon themselves, whether it is in their job descriptions or not, that they need to protect their superiors from unnecessary disturbances. That is the corporate expectation. And often, and often, many of us as assistants, we operate within the space, but we fail to appreciate and distinguish the distress signals. You'll notice that Elisha says to Gehaz, this woman's soul is vexed. Her soul is vexed. We become so fixated on policy. We are so hard and fast on procedure and we fail to read the distress signals. If you have operated in this way, it does not matter even if you're the CEO of the organization. You have been operating in assistant mode. That's what assistants do. They are sticklers for procedures. You do not come this way. If you've come that way, stay out. Go back. Get out. That is how assistants operate. Those who are in charge, those who are in leadership, they read the signals first. And when they have read the signals, they then come to a decision. They then come to a conclusion. I, I hope you'll be around by next Monday. We want to look at how we should make decisions when we are at the mountaintops. Now, I want to give you other examples. This is not just unique to the Old Testament. This is not just a problem that Gehaz had. I'm going to give you three more examples from the New Testament. And example number one, you'll find it in Matthew chapter 14 from verses 15 to 16. What is happening here? And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, Jesus saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitude away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Verse 16, But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give them to eat. This is the assistant mentality that I want to stress. Send the multitude away. There are people who want to keep Jesus unto themselves. There are people who want to have access to the management alone. Everyone else must be sent away. They are threatened by the masses that come. They want to be the center of attraction to those who are in leadership. If you still operate this way, you think everyone is a competition as far as you're concerned, you are operating in assistant mode. And I hope this has not been your experience in 2021 as we wind up. Let us look at uh, example number two. We find it in Matthew chapter 15, the verses 21 to 24. It reads as follows. When Jesus left there, he withdrew to the area of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, 
a Canaanite woman from the region came and kept crying out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly tormented by a demon. Yet he did not say a word to her. Listen to verse 23. His disciples approached him and urged him, Send her away because she cries out after us. Well, on this one, Jesus did not say anything to the woman and neither did Jesus say anything to his disciples. There are some times when you are dealing with an assistant, some things can only be resolved with silent treatment. You don't have to correct them, just leave them be and you continue with your business. Jesus is the one dealing with this woman. The Canaanite woman is crying after Jesus, not after the disciples. But here is a problem with assistants. Assistants begin to believe they are in the leadership. They believe they are in the top circle. They believe they are the real thing. They draw themselves within the circle where they don't fit. If you have been operating this way in 2021, guess what? You have been in assistant mode, trying to make yourself be part of the clique that you are not. It's above your pay grade. That's not where you are. Accept it. You are just an assistant. But assistants will say, she is crying after us. Us. We are Jesus and the assistant Jesuses. This is a problem that we have to deal with. If we do not change this mindset, a lot can go wrong. Many can get hurt, especially the vulnerable ones. Those who cannot defend themselves, they stand to suffer a lot of harm and pain. Why do I say so? Fast forward to Matthew chapter 19. We begin at verse 18. The Bible provides as follows. Then children were brought to him who, Jesus, so he might put his hands on them and pray for these little ones. But the disciples rebuked them. Then Jesus said, leave the children alone. And don't try to keep them from coming to me because the kingdom of heaven is made up of people like this. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Assistance can derail a program. When people are coming for a blessing, they will rebuke them. When they're coming for prayer, they will rebuke them. Many of us have suffered a loss. We are reporting losses. Why? Because an assistant turned away a client. Why? Because an assistant treated a client like trash. And guess what they said? We don't care. Just go. Get out of here. They have rebuked those who have sought the service of the establishment. Some churches are not growing. Why? Because the believers have been rebuked. Why? Because those who have come genuinely seeking Christ have been rebuked. In their innocence of seeking Christ, now they regret why they even came. Why? Because of the assistance. That's what they are good for. Just to rebuke and to throw people out. And I want you to look at point number five. There is the other thing that I want to raise to say, even when you are dealing with assistance, you need not stoop to their level. You need to continue to operate above assistance. And this is what I want you to notice. This is a prophet of God. As a prophet of God, he gets a revelation from prophecy. But on this particular incident, he has not received insight from the Lord about the condition of this woman. And what is point number five? Point number five, prophecy will not be availed where research can work. This particular prophet has at his disposal the um, opportunity to interview the lady and even to diagnose and assess that she is under distress. Those who are in leadership are going to find the answer for themselves and not abuse the office of prophecy. Some of us are going into these prophetic um, um, uh, gatherings that usually uh, mark the end of the year, the deliverance gatherings that, the, the gatherings that mark the end of the year. But the question is, are you not going there to check on what you can establish for yourself? You have not been promoted. What have you done about your qualifications? You have not been promoted. What have you done about your performance? But do you really need a prophet to tell you that? You have not developed in some areas of your life, but what have you done in the way of diagnosing the problem, in the way of researching to what the solution could be? Indeed, the young man is late 
the young man is dead. That's when God will come in in raising him, not in establishing what the problem is. That is left to you. Establish what the problem is. And the prophet of God goes on to do his research by observation. He does his research by interviews. And when he is done with his research, he then establishes what ought to be done. What am I saying unto you? As we go through the rest of this year, take note in the remainder of the year, do not behave like an assistant and seek to depend on prophecy when you can research by observation and interviews. Let us continue on Friday when we look at Elisha and Gehaz one more time and how God protects his own. Until then, blessings and peace.